Hey everyone, it is um, uh, Saturday, February 27th, 2021. Um, I'm setting this thing up real quick. Uh, so I've, uh, I've dug out my old chassis here. This is the old frame for uh, 10365 before we swapped it out for a reconditioned frame. Now, um, some of you may or may not know that the frame for 6477 is in really bad condition. So what Ethan and I are going to be doing uh, is reconditioning the former frame for 10365 to replace the rusted out frame of 6477. Uh, both cars are uh, East Coast cars, or were originally East Coast cars. Uh, 10365 was a Florida car and then made its way up to uh, New Jersey, so it had a lot of salt air. That's this car. Uh, but th but it's overall not in terrible condition compared to a lot of other frames. Uh, and a funny thing, even though this came from 10365, you can see it says 10351. So this chassis was originally designed to be for uh, 10351, not 10365. That's why... It's important to know, you know, Ford and Chevy, they have like, oh, we, it's a matching numbers car. DeLorean does not do that. It does not matter. Nobody cares. Numbers matching engine, number matching car, number matching transmission. It never occurred that way at the factory. They just grabbed an engine and grabbed a transmission and put them together and then put it in whatever frame was there. And then whatever body was coming off the line, they put the frame with the engine in it underneath it and that's how they made DeLoreans. The only numbers that matter are the VIN numbers that are in the door sill plate and underneath the windshield in front of the driver's side. So, uh, and somebody goes, oh, it's a matching numbers DeLorean. They haven't been in the community very long or they don't, they don't know or whatever. It does not matter in the DeLorean community, not like it does in the classic Chevy or classic Ford community. So my objective here is to get this frame out of here. I've got to put it on this dolly or something, balance it on that tiny dolly, bring it around here, and uh, I'm going to get another sawhorse. I have a sawhorse. It's, it's, so I've got to basically elevate this thing to be uh, such that uh, I can work on it because I have to modify it much the same way I modified the frame for um, uh, for one, uh, 10365. Uh, swap frame, not the original frame. This is the original frame. So, uh, for the record, for the record, the frame for 10365 is uh, here, and it's going to be going on to 6477. The frame for 6477 is going, maybe we'll refurbish it and sell it. Uh, maybe we won't. Maybe it's just garbage. We don't know yet. Uh, the frame that's currently in 6477 came from uh, the Gowdies in uh, Mississippi. That car had been rear-ended uh, right around here, and I had all of that repaired and, uh, and some modifications to the frame, and that's what's in that uh, car now. That, the Gowdies are uh, putting a different frame under their DeLorean because they're turning it into a monster truck. But whatever. So... Uh, that's what's going on there. I'm going to see if I can do this without killing myself. This. I don't even know if this thing's recording properly, but uh, there we go. You can hear my phone ringing. I'm not answering it right now. A little bit, a little bit busy.
If anybody tells you uh, that uh, owning DeLorean is easy, they're always expensive. You can buy them cheap, but uh, it takes money to get them up to the level that uh, you would have spent in the first place had you bought one that's already done. That said, um, there's work involved, and if you don't have what it takes to do the work, just don't buy the car. And that goes for any project car. I don't care if it's a old Pantera or a DeLorean or Lotus or you know Camaro or whatever. Just if you can't do the work or spend the money, don't buy these things because it's stupid. The only smart DeLorean to buy is the die-cast metal one. Just get the small one. That's all that matters as far as if you want to be financially smart about it. Don't buy one of these in real life. Any kid can do it. Then you take the dolly. Take the dolly. Kick it a little closer to the middle. Almost balanced, almost balanced. So, how am I going to do this? I need to close this gate, but this on that side of the gate, I have very little room to work in. So, okay, a little bit, a little bit. Mostly balanced. Now, Uh. 
Move this right here. even know if this camera is seeing anything. <clears throat> so gotta put the chassis on the saw horses. Let's see if I can do this. <clears throat> know if this is even in shot. Any kid can do it. Okay. I achieved that initial objective. So <clears throat> let me briefly go over what's going on here. Um, 
right now. Let me rotate this up so you can see my whatever. Okay, so right now, uh, VIN 10365 is in my garage. I'm doing wiring and stuff. It still needs to be assembled. That's the one that has the GM 5.3 liter LS V8 with the uh, well, Texas Speed cam. It should make about 426 horsepower uh, when it's done. It's a long way from being done. I've got interior work, exterior work, finishing up wiring just a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> so that's happening. Now, Ethan has my other DeLorean VIN 6477 at his house. And we know already it's got a bad frame. It was a New York car. Uh, interesting story on VIN 6477. I bought it from Anthony Ragusa. And uh, that car sat <clears throat> under a tree on dirt in upstate New York for 19 years while Anthony was in prison for organized crime. This is the first uh, the first business dealing I've ever had with someone who uh, was in the mafia or uh, in any form of uh, organized crime. So, uh, <coughs> interesting history on that car is after the after John Lennon left the Beatles, he had a Buddy, Buddy Holly cover band. He and some guys in New York are playing Buddy Holly cover tunes. <coughs> Excuse me. The drummer for that band was the first owner for 6477. And Anthony was friends with that guy, and that's how Anthony require, uh, acquired uh, Finn 6477. And, and then I'm the third owner, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm out of shape. <clears throat> Gotta get some water. My throat was getting dry. I had to get some water. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Things that I'm going to be doing to this chassis. Um, see, see this right in here. Let me. See this right in here I'm gonna cut a circle or inscribed circle here on the other side too to make it easier to install the steering rack the plate right here and the plate right here will be replaced with 3 16 plate steel and also the let me let me also straighten this up. This is called this is called the rear frame section. This is called the cross member. Cross member, rear frame section, and then over here there's a bar that goes right here. That's the strut tower brace. People mistakenly call this the cross member when this is the cross member. So there it is. I'm going to be modifying the rear frame section to be removable. I'm going to cut it here and here and add a flange and so it'll be able to be bolted in and unbolted to make it easier to service the engine. So that's it. I'm going to take a break. But that's uh, what's going to happen. We're going to modify this frame. <clears throat> We're going to modify this frame. And this is going to be in 6477. So after I modify the, the crumple zone to allow easier installation and maintenance of the steering rack and reinforce these plates by replacing and making the rear frame section removable, this is going under 6477, that car, <coughs> excuse me, it's going under 6477. That car is going to be pretty much a stock DeLorean. It's going to have 
uh, some su su suspension modifications and maybe exhaust modifications, but it's just going to be plain old, regular, run-of-the-mill DeLorean with tasteful modifications. That's it. I'm going to go take a break. That's it. After I make the modifications to the front couple tubes and the cross members for front and rear to the 316's plate and make the rear frame section uh, removable uh, to make it easier access for maintenance on the engine, um, it's going to go into 6477 and it's going to be a regular functioning driving DeLorean with its original engine, actually with the engine from 10365, which only has 22,000 miles on it. <coughs> <clears throat> so it's going to be using the engine from 10365, which only had 22,000 miles on it when I parked it, versus the engine that it had, which had 42,000 miles. So uh, it's going to be just a regular DeLorean with tasteful suspension and exhaust mods, a original interior, and maybe a radio, I don't know. So that's what's going on now. Ethan's going to work on that while I continue working on 10365. That's it. There it is.